Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. This video is part one on a series of how I created this Edwardian inspired blouse. This will go over how I drafted the pattern from scratch and fitted the mock-up to my body. And part two, which will be next, is going to go over how I actually sewed it. So stick around guys. Okay, so I'm starting out with a concept sketch for what I think my blouse will look like. Drawing my little mannequin person. So I'm envisioning something with bishop sleeves or balloon sleeves, a lace collar, and insertion lace and tucks. And then here's just a quick sketch of what I think the pattern pieces might look like and what pattern pieces I need to create. This just helps me get my head in the right place. Okay, so now I'm at my drawing board and I'm starting out with my loose fitting bodice block. So this is a bodice block that already has a lot of built-in ease and it doesn't have much um, bust shaping. So it has a narrow dart. So it's perfect for this kind of blouse. And so I'm just tracing that out. And there's the traced out version. So now I'm referencing my drafting book just to see how they recommend getting the dart shaping incorporated into tucks. So I was not sure about that. And here I'm just removing the waist and hip shaping. And at this point, I thought it would be a good idea to move the dart to the underarm position, but in hindsight, that wasn't the best idea, but I was just experimenting. So you get a good look at how to go about changing the position of a dart anyway. And now I'm mapping out exactly where on the pattern the insertion lace will be, as well as the tucks. And at this point, I'm just marking each tuck with a straight line, but I will later be slashing and spreading to add the necessary width at those points. And the insertion lace, no width will be added there, but I will just be marking it with notches. So my pattern book instructed to add about two centimeters of width for each tuck. And so at this point, I'm just slashing that open and I'm gonna be spreading that to add the necessary width. There needs to be extra width, of course, so that the fabric can be folded in that place. Now, the cool thing about this in hindsight was that at this point, I was a little scared of doing tiny little pin tucks, so I was just planning on doing wider tucks, but in the end, I ended up just choosing to do pin tucks when I'd already cut out my fabric and everything, and I just doubled up the number of tucks and made them half the width that I'd planned, and it worked out just fine. So again, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get that dart shaping incorporated into a tuck at this point, and I realized that my dart should indeed be in the shoulder position for this, because that's the closest to the vertical direction of the tucks. So now I've moved the dart up to the shoulder. And so I'm basically just incorporating it into this tuck right here. I'm just making that tuck be wider at the top than at the bottom. And here I'm just testing it out on the paper to see exactly if, what that looks like when it's folded. And I was pretty sure it would work, so I decided to go with this technique. Now you'll have to stay tuned for part two, in, where I show in the actual sewing process how this turned out. And of course, whenever you're altering a pattern, there is a lot of just cutting and taping and fixing up the pattern. That's what I'm doing now. 
adding seam allowance now. I usually add one and a half centimeter seam allowance. Okay, so now I'm thinking about what I'm going to do with the neckline. And so I'm referencing my other drafting book because I remember that it had this illustration on how to do a raised neckline. And so I'm just experimenting on possibly raising the actual neckline of the blouse in addition to having a straight collar. Now I wouldn't actually end up using this technique, but it was just an experiment. That's the fun thing about drafting is you get to play around and experiment and you can always fix it if you make a mistake. So this is the back bodice piece now. I'm just doing the same process. I'm marking out the placement of the insertion lace as well as the tucks. And again, experimenting with that raised neckline. I do think this would be a nice technique if you didn't have a collar, you just had the neckline of the blouse itself be higher. Okay, now here is the sleeve. Now on my sleeve block, I find that the sleeve cap is a bit too steep, a bit too high, so I always lower it. And now I'm going to my drafting book for instructions on how to make what they call a bishop sleeve or what other people sometimes call a balloon sleeve. So it's that sleeve that um, bulges out at the bottom and then is gathered into a nice cuff. So I'm I divided the sleeve into six sections and I'm slashing and spreading and of course there will be the most extra width at the very bottom of the sleeve. And my book gave very specific directions about how much width to add at each slash. It actually instructed you to add more width at some of these slashes than at others, which makes sense because you don't necessarily want the same amount of fullness on the side of your sleeve that's right next to your body. And there I added the seam allowance and I added some extra length at the bottom, which helps give it that bulgy effect. And now I will be following the directions for drafting a straight collar from my drafting book. It is pretty straightforward. You could probably get away with just using a simple rectangle but I decided to just go with their directions, which ends up creating a collar with a slight amount of curvature in it. And if you'll want to see how my collar plans turn out, then you'll have to stay tuned for part two in the sewing, because there were some problems that occurred here. Of course, I always label all of my pattern pieces. And here is the finished pattern, all put in a bag. Hi everyone. So I'm here with a rather goofy looking mock-up. Um, first of all, I'm wearing this mock-up backwards because it is supposed to button up in the back, but I didn't have anyone to help me pin it up my back at the moment. My husband is at the park with our kids so I could film this. So I just put it on this way. Um, there are quite a few problems with this pattern as you can see. I guess I just really underestimated how much extra size I need in pregnancy because this is quite tight fitting um, and it's supposed to be a loose kind of blousy style. So first of all I need a lot of extra room in the lower part of the blouse which makes sense because I didn't really accommodate for that at all in my pattern drafting. So basically I'm just going to like measure how much this is gaping open here and then I'll know that that's the amount of extra that I need to add at the hips of the pattern. I also forgot to add the standard maternity alteration of adding some extra length at the center front because as you can see it rides up higher in the front because I'm bigger in the front so I need more length. And let's see. The tucks did turn out well. That was the main thing that I wanted to test with this mock-up was how the tucks would turn out because I've, I've never sewn a garment with tucks in it before. And the collar, it's 
it's not properly done up, but there's a few problems here. It comes up much too high. Now part of this is just the seam allowance at the top, but even the seam like at the actual neck of the garment that the collar attaches to is too high. So I'm going to lower that neckline a little bit and then I may or may not remove some height from the collar itself. And when I lower the neckline, I'll also need to add some extra circumference to the collar to fit the wider neckline. And yeah, mostly this just needs a lot of extra width all throughout it so it can have that nice blousey effect. So stay tuned for part two of this video where I will have made those corrections to the pattern and I'll be sewing my final garment out of white linen with insertion lace and tucks and a collar and buttons and all that fun stuff. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome history bounding content and give this video a like and leave your comments and questions below. See you all later guys, bye.